Thank you for joining me today as we delve into the main sections of the Carl D. Perkins e-grant application. What you see before you is the first page that's going to come up. As you can see, I've chosen the 2016 year because I want to show you the application that Billings submitted last year. If you're looking for this fiscal year, you can simply click on this and move to whatever year you're looking for. And what we'll be writing this year is 2017. So you're going to choose 2017 on your screen. I'm showing you 2016 for the sake of this application. This is a little bit different screen than you've seen in the past if you've done your Perkins applications before. So you're going to original application and I'm going to open this application. Now the application is going to look the same for those of you who have actually seen this before. We had another webinar where I took you through the end of year reports. So what we're going to do is look at the main base of the application. So for instance, please click on your contact information and check to see that everything is accurate in your contact information. You must fill in all of the fields, otherwise when you get to the end of the application to submit, it's going to tell you that you have an error in your application and I don't want that to be a problem for you. So please make sure that your pathway counselor is filled out and if you want a Carl Perkins program contact person as well. You must indeed put in a pathway counselor. Most people are putting in their school counselors, but you may have someone else in your school that's going to be doing that for you. We're going to skip the end of year report because that's the webinar that's already been done and it's about a 25 minute webinar to take you just through the end of year report. Funding is another page here to show you how much you will receive this year and in topic funding, it also tells you here if you've chosen um, one of these available goals in your grant. So to get to the topic funding, you're going to have to actually go back out to your main grant list, menu list, and you're going to the planning tool. So where I just went was the menu list. You're going into the planning tool and then we're going to select a district and I was just in the Billings district. And we'll see if this will come up with a planning tool so that you can see what it looks like. Yes. So. What we had here, I'm still in the 15-16 year to show you how this works. You're going to click on the radio button in the year you want. So for all of you that are listening to the webinar, you're going to want to be in the 2016-17, not 15-16. Click on open. When you get here, you're going to see more blue tabs across the top. The Perkins Career and Technical Education Set of Goals is here in Topic 7. You need to select Topic 7 and make sure that there's a check mark in Goal 7.0. And this just says to develop more fully the academic and career and technical education skills of secondary students who are enrolled in CTE programs. You do not have to add additional goals. You only need to have one goal. If you actually want more goals, like Billings did, they wanted to mirror the regional workforce needs in CTE. I just wanted to show you that because when we went to that funding tab on our main page, you actually now can see that Topic 7 has been selected. So I'm going to return to the application for Billings so we can actually look at that one more time into Grant Access. and Billings and search. Now we're back where we want to be. I wanted to be in the original application and I'm opening it. Alrighty. So we were in funding. So now when you click on topic funding, you'll see that there's a checkbox here. You won't see a checkbox unless you go through that planning process, the planning topic tool and select that. Next we're moving over to the application pages. When you're on the application pages, there are a set of 
required uses of funds. I'm scrolling down so you can see them a little bit. You will need to fill in something for all the required uses of funds. So Perkins is set up as required and permissive. What the federal government would really like you to do is to address these required uses of funds before you move to any spending in permissive uses. So first you want to describe how you're going to strengthen the academic and career and technical skills of students through the integration of academic and CTE courses. All right, so that's how you're going to put that in here. Two is just linking career and technical education at the secondary level to the post-secondary level. You don't have to answer anything there. For three, it's asking you to provide students with an understanding of and experience in all aspects of industry. So take a look at what industry, what programs you offer in your school, um, whether it's agriculture, whether it's business, whether it is family consumer science. One of the things that you could do if you're unsure about the understanding of and experience in all aspects of the industry is to look at the Department of Labor Labor Day report. You can find that on any Google search and look at what industry needs there are workforce needs in the state and you may even be able to look at that by region. We need to have that in there. R4 is to develop, improve, and expand the use of technology in your program. So for Billings School District, they have an internal technology committee that actually looks at that, but you may be upgrading technology in a number of ways in your career and technical education classrooms. We're just asking here for your technical and your career and technical education classrooms. R5 talks about your professional development. So here you need to spend, as we've talked about before in our first webinar, you need to spend 10% of your budget on professional development for your career and technical education teachers. So either you can use that to help them with their professional organization dues, you can pay for them to come to state professional conferences like Montana ACTE, that's the Association of Career and Technical Educators, or perhaps you're going to have someone go to a national conference, or if you'd like to have an expert speaker come into your school and talk to everyone in the school, you could do that. Um, it's wise to first consult with your program specialist that is overseeing your Perkins application and just ask if your choice of what your expert speaker would be really falls under Perkins mandate. R7 is initiate, improve, expand, and modernize quality program effectiveness. So again, here Billings talked about consulting the labor markets through workforce committees and chambers. Um, they also have um, partnerships with City College because they are in a community that has City College right next to uh, one of their schools. Here you might even talk about you could um, put in a new program. Perhaps you're in putting in a tech ed program or a STEM program or a health science program. Just explain what it is you're going to be doing there. Again, we're asking you about the services and activities that are sufficient size, scope, and quality. If you didn't listen to the first webinar that referred to the end of year report, uh, there is a definition of size, scope, and quality in the end of year report on page two, and you'll be able to see what's written in there. You don't have to um, answer R9. I would like you to read, though, any of the things that are in here, like develop and implement a process to evaluate your program and prepare special populations. Those are things that also come up in your end of year report. I just want you to be prepared for that. Again, as I talk about this, every time you go through a page, please hit the Save button. You're not seeing a Save button because this is an application that's already been submitted from last year. So you will see a Save button on your application. So please go ahead and save your page. We're going to scroll back up to the top, and now we can come to the permissive uses of funds. Permissive uses of funds 
um, you also have an option. Perhaps everything you want to spend your money on is in a required use. Then you can click this box that says no permissive uses will be targeted and you don't have to fill out any of the information below. If you want to use your money on permissive uses, you can come over here and read through this. So are you involving parents or business or labor organizations helping you with your programs? Are you doing some kind of career guidance or academic guidance for your students that will um, require some funding? Here, are you providing any kind of, of financing through Perkins for work-related experiences for students? Are you doing anything special for your uh, special populations? And keep in mind that Perkins has a large definition for special populations. Assisting career and technical student organizations. So if you are indeed going to pay for the professional dues in the technical career and technical student organization because you have a chapter advisor for BPA, DECA, FCCLA, FFA, HOSA, Skills USA, or TSA, you can put this in here. Perhaps you're also going to use your professional development funds to allow that chapter advisor to go to a state conference. You can put that in here as well. Are you providing mentoring or support? Are you going to lease or purchase something for your program? What I find is a larger manufacturing and or some agriculture programs that have farms involved will be leasing some things that are too expensive for them to be purchasing. So you can put that in here. If you're doing anything to support entrepreneurship education, if you are improving or developing new CTE courses, we talked about that also in required uses, um, but you can also put it here in the permissive uses. Are you going to have any kind of pocket academy in your school, or is the school going into a career-themed academy? And interestingly, providing support for family consumer sciences is under a permissive use, and that's the traditional family consumer science programs uh, that are basically strengthening family and relationships. P17 is support for training and activities in non-traditional fields. If you feel that is necessary in your community, please add it here. I don't know if you are going to pool a portion of your funds with other available um, innovative initiatives. You can put that in here. And if you're supporting other CTE activities consistent with the purpose of the Perkins Act, some schools choose to use a Perkin, uh, some of their Perkins money to fund part of um, part of a stipend for your local chapter advisors, and you can put that here in P20. Again, please save the page so you don't lose any of this work. So we've already looked at contact information. You filled that in. End of year reports was in a, on another webinar. You looked at your funding and how you did your topic funding. We have now completed required and permissive uses of funds on the application page. Now we're going to special populations. Here's the definition of special populations for Perkins. So you can see that it's much wider than just a student that has an IEP or a 504 in your school. There's three questions here. You don't need to give us a lot of verbiage on this. Basically, assess and monitoring the needs of your special populations. I'm sure that all of you have uh, teacher aides or you have counselors that are checking in with students. Uh, do you remove barriers for special populations, such as alternative testing, adaptive technologies, alternate scheduling, anything like that? And then ensuring non-discrimination of members of special populations I'm guessing that within your student handbook that you have something on uh, with a non-discrimination clause in it. So this is, should be a very simple page. Again, please save your page. You will have a save button down here at the end. Save your page, and we'll come back up to the next page that we're going to be doing. We're going to Big Sky Pathways. Big Sky Pathways. Another word for that is our programs of study or our career pathways. 
Here you're going to have a series of things that you can click on and answer the question. So do you have district strategies that link secondary and post-secondary? I think some of you are already involved in the dual credit initiative. You may have trade consortias. You may collaborate with four-year universities. You may do distance learning, so you have something on the Montana Digital Academy. So what you're going to do here is just give us a brief description. Any of these boxes that are clicked, this box is going to open, and you do have to click at least one of these boxes and tell us what is going on. Number two is to indicate the, the district strategies to promote preparation for non-TRAD training and employment, or in fact, all training and employment. So what are you doing? Do you have brochures? Are you offering internships? Do you, something, do you have an in-service for your faculty? Do you have students job shadowing? Do you have mentorship programs? Do you do middle school presentations? You click on whatever one that really applies to you. If you click on other, another blank box is going to open and you'll have to type in what you're talking about there. I pre-populate all of the information that we have on your Big Sky Pathways, if they've been done from 2011 through 2017. So if your school just finished working on a pathway this year with a college, it will show up as 2017, so it's good for next year. I also want to let you know that Big Sky Pathways are generally good, just in place, for five years, and then they expire because we feel at the end of five years you may have changed curriculum, the college may have changed curriculum, you may have changed teachers, and we need to just keep these pathways current. So if you see anything in your application, like this one says expiring, that means that you really do need to contact City College. You can also contact your program specialist at OPI in the CTE division who is overseeing your e-grants and ask them for the name of the Big Sky pa Pathway counselor at the college so that you can connect directly to the Big Sky Pathway counselor to start working on any expired pathways. If you want to develop a pathway, then you just simply need to click on the button that says developing. You, this, you don't have to fill this in. Any of these grade areas were pre-populated before. So all of our pathways are in here. In case that you are a little bit confused, anything that you do in agriculture, if you've got ag ed, that's ag food natural resources, you're going to be under ag food natural resources. Arts and communications, Although it says videography and broadcasting, and some of you do have videography and broadcasting, may also apply to an interior design program that you offer through your family consumer science program. Business management and administration. For those of you that have business teachers, there are four different categories they may have a pathway in. It could be this business management and administration. It might be marketing. It might be finance, and it might be information technology. So your CTE teacher will know all about that. If indeed you have a family consumer science teacher and she is doing something in culinary arts, it's going to be under hospitality and tourism. If you have a health science program, you're going to put it under health science. If you're offering early childhood development, or any kind of mental health services and counseling courses that's coming under human services. If you're doing education and training, and there are a few schools that now are starting to teach a very basic intro to uh, teacher education, this is where you'd put it. Law, Public Safety, and Corrections, we have a few pathways now that are just starting in Law, Public Safety, and Corrections with Helena College. Um, but that's uh, just maybe two or three schools right now. We don't have anything in government and public administration at the t this time, but we will be adding that. Architecture and construction is any of your um, wood shop projects that are going on. In fact, here in Billings, they design and build a house. This year they built a six-bedroom house. So that's what they'd be doing here. 
Manufacturing generally is if you're doing metals, if you're doing any kind of manufacturing production processes. This is also going to roll into advanced manufacturing as we move into the next couple of years. I know that's a definite workforce need in the state of Montana. Some of you are off offering automotive programs in your school that's coming under transportation, distribution, and logistics. And science, technology, engineering, and math, some of you do have engineering programs. Um, I know there's a lot more being developed right now, and you'll put it under here. If you don't see a pathway that you think you have in your school, please just write a comment for us down here below so that we can check to make sure your pathway paperwork has been filed and we are aware of it. All right, again, save the page on any work that you're doing. And we're going to move over to performance and accountability. Performance and accountability is um, done as academic attainment. This is academic attainment in math. This one is in technical skill attainment. This one is in school completions, student graduation rates, placement, non-traditional participation, non-traditional completion. These two are a little bit different and I'll explain for you. And then you can also see the performance level summary. Academic attainment, reading language arts, these are going to be pre-populated. So there's going to be a state negotiated performance level called a SNAPLE. And the SNAPLE is already pre-populated. We do that at OPI. The state of Montana has to negotiate with the federal government on what our performance levels are. This is what your previous year's reported performance level is. If it is lower than this number, um, then you did not meet the state performance standard. So here the, the state performance standard was met and they just put what their pro proposed performance target is going to be for this year. You get to click yes, save the page, and we can move on to the next page. If this number was lower, you'll need to click no, and another blank box is going to open, and you're going to tell me how, um, or your specialist, whoever's reading the grant, how you are indeed going to um, change uh, or make changes in the school to increase your reading language arts levels. So we'll go through each of these. The pages look all the same and I'm trying to keep all of these webinars at about 25 minutes. So we'll move quickly on to the next one. Math, you see they did meet that standard, so we got to check yes. Some of you, if you did not meet the math academic standard, just select no, and then a lot of you already have some different kinds of math strategies in place in your school for the entire school that you can talk about. Technical skill attainment is a little bit tricky. This is supposed to be an end of program. That's 9th through 12th, end of program assessment. And there are a very few programs that have an end of program assessment. You might have to ask your CTE teachers if their specific program area does have an assessment. School completion. So do you have students that now are uh, doing something with high set options? and what's going on in your school. So you can see how this works, the explanation down here for Billings and how they answered it. Student graduation rates. These are the student graduation replace, uh, rates that are reported to OPI. They met or exceeded what the state negotiated performance level was, and so they just set their next target. This is an interesting one because you see that the target is set lower than what the previous performance was. What we're just asking you to do is to meet or uh, slightly exceed what the state negotiated performance level is, especially in a smaller school where the loss of one or two students may really change your statistics here, then um, just set it at a reasonable rate above. Okay, again, since they did meet it, they didn't have to select that. Placement. What you need to do um, for this Perkins e-grant is you do two different accountability, a fall accountability and a spring accountability, where Christy Hendricks in our office contacts you and asks you to um, take a look at all of your career and technical education completers and 
see that was from last June and see if they actually got, went to the military, if they're in post-secondary, if they got a job, or if they are unemployed. So this is the rate on placement. I know one of the things for um, Billings, why this indicator was not met, had to do with it's getting harder and harder to find our students now that they have cell phones or even uh, disposable cell phones or pay by the minute kind of cell phones to track down your students and find out really what's going on. So they really are going to improve pre-apprenticeships. They may also be working on dual enrollment programs to boost that uh, percentage of students who are indeed going on to college. So here's their strategies. Non-traditional participation. That's for any student in your school that has taken one course in a non-traditional area. So agriculture and business are both gender neutral. That's just because we generally have a good split of 50-50 male and female students in both of those programs. When you get to family consumer science, it's generally all female. So that's where you're coming up with some of these numbers. Or if you have a shop class, uh, trades and industry, that might be predominantly male. That could be another reason. And again, in, in um, healthcare these days, in your health science programs, it's going predominantly female. And so that might alter this number as well. But that's what the state negotiated threshold is. It was meet, met or exceeded. Non-trad completion has to do with those non-traditional students that were in those non-traditional programs that are taking four or more semesters of that particular CTE program. So four or more semesters in health science, four or more semesters in family consumer science, culinary arts or interior design, something like that, or early childhood education, or four or more in architecture or manufacturing or STEM. So you'll see how those go. You can always look at the performance level summary right here to see what the overall is. Okay. We are going to stop here because you've filled out all the basic pages of this application. And the next webinar that we're going to do is going to take you into budget pages, budget detail, and any property and equipment that you purchase with your Perkins money. This is Renee Harris, Health Science Education Specialist. Thank you so much for your time today.